Leading with Back into Technology with Kathy Nellis and Mark Williams. Welcome to the 10th episode of the Fit Podcast. Here at GethinEllis.com, whilst we know physical fitness is essential, our mental health is vital too, and our fit, fit podcast is all about putting the human back into technology. One thing we can probably all agree on is the last year or so has been unprecedented, so we wanted to seek out the views of technology leaders, business owners, consultants, and many others from a range of different businesses and operations and organisations to discuss with them the impacts on their business, on their people, uh, and on their technology to see how they see the future unfolding. So without further ado, I'll introduce you to episode 10, where we speak to John Stenton. We'll kick us off. Um, welcome to the 10th episode of the Putting the Humour Back into Technology podcast. Uh, this week, we are joined by John Stenton, who is the head of IT for Thrive Homes. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jason. Hi, Mark. Hi, John. Welcome. Right. Well, we, we, we won't waste any time, John. We'll jump straight into the uh, the first question. Um, tell me a little bit about yourself, your business, uh, your job role, what you do. Okay, Thrive Homes is a housing association. We started off just over 11 years ago, um, taking three and a half thousand properties from Three Rivers Council as social housing. And since then we've grown and in the next couple of days, we're about to announce that we've just hit 5,000 properties, which is a big milestone for us. We were very small and that's big growth. Okay. Uh, And that's really good for us. Um, I joined Thrive Homes just coming up to three and a half years ago. And when I joined, things were in a little bit of a state. Uh, The IT infrastructure itself was uh, unreliable. So email was down for two weeks out of four. Um, The first week I joined, the databases were down and, and carried on being down for two more weeks. Um, so that was really quite poor. The business was badly affected. So the first thing I had to do was stabilize the infrastructure. So we moved everything into Azure, closed the data center, which got rid of the technical debt problem that we had. I then moved everybody off their substandard telephony system onto Skype for Business with a wrap over for the contact center which works really well although we did move off it recently obviously because we've moved to teams yeah i got rid of citrix and got everybody a laptop which then gave me the opportunity to start bringing in home working and working from any location in the country with a secure vpn obviously i what was next no, that, 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 that's fine. I think that's absolutely fine for your intro, mate. You've been uh, been delivering stuff for three years, by the sound of it. Well, it's all stabilisation for the first year, which was included getting us into Office 365, get rid of the Exchange server, which brought in the stability. And then the, the fun started, and that's when we started looking at the applications and the data. Right. And that's where I've been pushing things since because the housing association applications are quite dated and not very flexible and they're very expensive to get changed. So we're just going through a transformation program now where we've started the procurement to move into Microsoft Dynamics. So presumably, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to, I do probably know who you're, well, one of the two or three likely candidates that you're probably <laughs> working with, let's, let's not name them, but you're, you're on one of the, the, the typical historic um, line of business dedicated uh, housing housing management type systems etc. So for another year or so, yes. I, I wanted to ask you, John. This is not not on the not on the script, but um, it what, what's really refreshing to hear uh, from you know through through my lens, and, and I hope you take this as a compliment because it's because it's meant this way. Is that what you've done? Is you to to me you've you, you've put the concrete floor in. Yes. And that, that's what you did to begin with. And so you've not done the sexy stuff, if you like, to begin with. You put the concrete floor in uh, and then, then you've got something solid that you can build on. And those sorts of analogies are things that I use all the time, you know, when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking to people. And it's so encouraging to hear that because, um, you know, particularly, you know, the leaders of the organizations, um, you know, they, they, they just want to do digital transformation, don't they? Just as a throwaway example. Right? Yes. Bloody clear what that means. Um, so, so it's really refreshing to hear that. But what I, what I really want to ask you, and, and so it's sort of segue into the, the next question, is wh- wh- how did you 
put the concrete floor in, if you like, as far as the people were concerned in, uh, you know, in, in your world? Because presumably they were used to firefighting and all, and all that sort of thing. And it's a Absolutely. very different set of behaviour and perhaps a different set of people. I don't know. But how, how did you solidify, if you like, your, your, your people approach, um, you know, to, to dealing with that? People, people don't like change. Mm. And we all know that. But the one thing I found with change is once you started the ball rolling, it's like a great big snowball. If you keep it going, it's not too bad. If you stop, you have to start all over again. Yeah. So the the in the very first instance with the Azure move and with moving to Office 365, it was around, and because we're a small HA, at the time we were sub 100 employees and I learned that everybody's name and everybody knew they could talk to me. Yeah. So it's just talking about advantages. Yes, things are going to change. Yes, you're going to have to do things slightly differently, but you're going to be able to do it. It's going to work consistently time after time after time, which you don't have today. You'll have a lot less interruptions. You'll have a lot more productivity and it will work a lot better. But it's the one thing that I cannot stress enough is communication. And I might not be the best at it, but I try my darndest. Talk to people, explain what's going on, what's in it for them. What are they going to get out of the change? But keep the change going. And anyone that, if you know any of my users, I never stop introducing change. <laughs> Even if it's if it's changing the MFA or, 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 or just introducing Planner. Anything that we can do in the business that just keeps that ball rolling and the user saying, yep, John's bringing something new in. Let's get on with it. We know it's going to help us. It helps and it keeps it going. But it's communication. That's the main thing, Mark. That's, I mean, that's really, really good to hear. And I'm going to say this again. It's meant as a compliment. Um, coming from an IT bloke, <laughs> that's, that is fantastic. So you keep it up. <laughs> I'm trying very hard. It's one of the reasons I'm here. <laughs> Get used to talking in public. It's not easy for IT people, especially no, as it's oldies. It's, it, it, it's, it's not. We used to be hidden in a cupboard. It, 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 it's not easy. So let, let me so let me go with that second question then, because because uh, because we are we are on a little bit on the clock today. Um, so you know the last we, the question was phrased about the last year, but it's a bit longer than that now, isn't it? Since we you know since we all got um, you know, we, we all got embroiled in all sort of stuff. What so what what kind of lessons? So thinking about your people and and your technology, what lessons will you? I mean, it was interesting to hear you segue that you were thinking about home working before this. I, I, I guess having having done the concrete floor, but what lessons will you will you take forwards, and 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 how do you see these being delivered? I mean, it could be could be anything, you know. Uh, yeah, technically wise, we were already set up, and and just before lockdown, our CEO literally just walked out onto the office floor and said, "Right, that's it, folks. We're going to work from home from now on. Please remember to take your headsets home," and and everyone could work from home. Uh, what? What for me that has been difficult and that I've really had to, and it comes back to communication, and I've had to adapt, is not being able to sit with somebody side by side for them to explain their issues. So it's it's really turned into a long protracted process for something that we could have just sorted out in five minutes just by showing me if I'd stood at someone's desk. So for me, I think communications and how you communicate has, has really changed. Screen sharing in Teams is an absolute godsend. Yeah. But for me, it is. It's really helped emphasize, not emphasize, but improve my communication skills and my whole team. Yeah. Do you think that's true if you're for, you know, looking at it through the user lens as well? As we, we asked a question of somebody a few weeks ago about whether uh, so it was in, not not in a housing association, but a but a similar sort of position about um, whether uh, users' confidence had grown, but because they were feel like they were in their case they were thrust into working from home and you know and, and so on and so forth. But but do you think do you think the users are, are getting better at communicating their issues? You know, get, to you guys, they are, they are certainly are. getting better at it. They understand the difficulties, but they've also grown in confidence in it as well. If they had to hook up their their laptop to a, a spare screen. They're having a go at it now, right. where before they'd have just said, John, help. Uh, that's actually really interesting, John, because the third question we were going to ask you is, have your users grown in confidence in technology during lockdown? I was saying, I, I, I think you've just. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I forgot we had that one in there. <laughs> I think. I think I, I, I think you've just answered it. And in terms of like, obviously just using the hardware, but, but it generally like sort of using teams, using um, software packages and things like that as, as that. Has that improved with, with, with your staff and, and your users in particular? 
certainly the use of teams has grown tremendously in, and and the number of meetings has gone from a few a week to hundreds so yes they are getting a lot more used to using tech cool no, so just thinking of another, of another question sort of related to that G going back um, a, a number of years uh, john to when um, sharepoint was first introduced i don't know how long ago that is now but it's let's say it's 10 or 12 years ago when, whenever the first round of sharepoint. you on premises sharepoint yeah like, on-premises sharepoint 2003 was it okay a bit longer than that then right um, it's been around a while so just think about that in teams as you know as an example um the 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 um what's the way of saying this the marketing blurb from Microsoft back, you know, back with SharePoint in the day was along the lines of just crack on, set it up, don't need to worry about it, and so on and so forth. And then, uh, you know, users will do with it what, what they do with it. And then a number of organizations uh, found that maybe it did need, did need some policing and it did need, did, did, did need some governance set up around it. So it's the same question now for teams. Because obviously, technology has moved on and, and broadly it's a lot easier to use than it was 15 years ago, you know, anyway. Have you found that? you need to police or govern um put in the right practices with with teams or have you just let people get on with it teams i've let people just get on with it at some point we will have to knuckle in and find out how we're using it and what teams have been orphaned and what have been left behind and yeah. what's necessarily what isn't uh, as for sharepoint uh, we we all know microsoft back off everything to sharepoint yeah. um, but for sharepoint we've actually helped and built a document repository for each team right okay so, and we've talked them through how to use it how to secure it how to unsecure it but at the same time we've totally locked it down so that no one outside of thrive can access it so if people need to change exchange documents with third parties we've actually put a bolt on on the outside edge of sharepoint so we can have external document repositories so that we don't have to use we transfer and, and and other tools like that dropbox because they're always getting compromised at least this way we have more control over it we know what's going out and we know we can keep it clean so essentially you've got a um you've got something in front of your um you've got a wall garden in in sharepoint and yes. then you've got something slightly in front of that which has got some authentication uh, a bit of a portal really i suppose to it, um, it, it is almost a dropbox but externally yeah. And the use and any external user just has to use a, a their email address and a user and a password we give them, and that document's there for three days for them, unless it needs to be longer or less. And it's so much easier to. Uh, we, we, Gethin and I do uh, a fair bit with 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 BI and you know just to make make the segue. There's lots of lots of BI tools there on you know on the marketplace. Uh, clearly, Microsoft's you know got got a big investment in in BI, but it's so much easier to use the things that people f are familiar with. And I'm, I'm not suggesting that Power BI isn't good, right? And, and and everything else associated with that. But obviously, you've got Tableau and Click and all these other other products out there that, that you could use. But but fundamentally, if you're using stuff that people are using every day, do you know what? That's really quite helpful because they don't have to learn yet another set of basic how to use SharePoint. You know, how to use Dropbox, how to use you know, we as you say, we transfer or, or or whatever it is. And I know there's commonality between these things, but it makes life a lot easier. Right, get things look at me. I can see, I can feel it coming through the airways. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the last question in part one is is yours. Oh, was it? Yeah. I feel like I've asked all the questions. Uh, you you have me, but you you seen as you've asked <laughs> you, you all. Can, it. You can have a go in part two then. <laughs> yeah, go on. You crack on. Um, so. What's the what's the best piece of advice, John, or the, of business or, or career advice that that you've you've ever been given? Uh, the best piece of advice I've been given, and and I'm trying very hard to do with it, is communicate more with your users. And the, and it's a really important point. It really is, and that came to me very early on in my career. Talk more and listen. Listen more and talk about what you need to, but do it succinctly. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let Gethin finish it off. But my first boss said to me, he's got loads of one liners. He's, 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 uh, he's not with us anymore, unfortunately, but um, he's got loads of one liners. And one of them was um, you've got two ears and one mouth for a reason. Yes. <laughs> but in IT, we don't talk enough. We well, listen too much. Yeah, yeah. And that's why we get treated like a service industry. Perhaps. Yeah, perhaps. Well, well, that's that, that's an interesting piece of advice to end part one on, John. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to part two. We'll just take a short break now, and there'll be a, a the, the the second part of this will be following in a in a couple of days' time. Thanks, Gethin.